Good morning. This is Kelly and on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. Winter weather is back and once again impacting Kelloland drivers. There are uh, there is a no travel advisory on roads, including Hill City to Pine Ridge. I-90 is closed from Wall to the Wyoming border. All roads on the Pine Ridge Reservation are also closed. The Oglala Sioux Tribe Department of Public Safety says any drivers out on the roads will be charged and fined $350. The cars will be parked and everyone will be brought to the nearest service center. Officials say this includes anyone trying to get around I-90. Flyers are also having trouble this morning. According to its website, the Rapid City Regional Airport is closing its main runway and terminal. The airport adds the surrounding roads are icy and that travel to the airport is not advised. Now let's send it over to meteorologist Scott Munt in the Storm Center for a check on this morning's forecast. Good morning, Scott. Well, good morning, Travis. Good morning, everybody. Snow continues this morning. That will last straight through the afternoon and evening for many across western, central, and northern South Dakota, where we do have numerous winter storm warnings, blizzard warnings that are in effect through tomorrow evening. That covers much of western South Dakota. In central and northeastern Kelloland, uh, we are also looking at blizzard warnings today through tomorrow. And then winter weather advisories for those areas highlighted in blue. They do have a chance to see freezing drizzle, freezing rain during the morning and the afternoon and blowing snow as we'll eventually see things switch over to snow. Winds will be strongest probably tomorrow from Aberdeen, Watertown, Marshall. That's when we do expect to see wind gusts easily over 50 miles per hour. May hold off until the afternoon hours tomorrow. And there's the outline where the areas may receive the freezing drizzle and freezing rain from Watertown to the southwest. You see that through Huron, maybe getting close to Mitchell. Even Madison can be thrown in as well as the winter area. More details on your forecast with Brian coming up. Thank you, Scott. A former child care worker is behind bars accused of raping a three-year-old girl last week at a Sioux Falls daycare. 18-year-old Carter Ronke worked at the daycare for the love of children, which is near the Empire Mall. He was arrested Friday and charged with rape and sexual contact with a child. According to court papers, the mom noticed her daughter was bleeding after using the restroom. The little girl then told her mom that she hurt really bad and that, quote, he told me to touch him, then he touched me. The little girl also said they were playing a game during nap time. We reached out to the daycare and were told Ronke is no longer an employee. We also checked his background and he does not appear to have a criminal history in South Dakota. A 21-year-old Sioux Falls man is facing animal cruelty and weapons charges after police say he accidentally hurt, shot a dog. It had a few people that were inside a home and they were handling guns, firearms. Um, one of them ended up loading it and inadvertently shot the dog that was in the house. Uh, the dog died. Luke Owlett was arrested along with cruelty to animals. He's also charged with possession of a loaded firearm while intoxicated and reckless discharge of a firearm. The South Dakota Fire Marshal's office is looking into what sparked a fire at a home northwest of Goodwin. The Dual County Sheriff's Office says it happened around 615 Monday morning. The home was almost done with construction, so no one was living there at the time. The sheriff's office posted these pictures of the scene to Facebook. Goodwin Fire Department, Clear Lake Fire Department, and Dual County Ambulance also responded to the fire. The South Dakota Department of Health has issued a warning about the threat of fentanyl mixed with xylazine. The Drug Enforcement Administration says this mixture is becoming increasingly widespread and poses a significant risk to public health. Fentanyl is a potent synthetic opioid that is often mixed with other drugs to increase their effects. Xylazine is a sedative commonly used on large animals such as horses and is not intended for human use. The combination of these two substances can lead to respiratory depression, seizures, and even death. The DOH urges medical professionals to report any cases of fentanyl and xylazine mixtures immediately. A high school assembly is warning students about the dangers of vaping. Steered Straight is a nonprofit organization working with schools across the country in the fight against addiction. Monday, they spent time at Brandon Valley's High School. 
I've interviewed 10,700 addicts in America, people who have struggled with addiction, and 94.9% of every single one of them started with three substances, alcohol, nicotine, and marijuana. Of all people who find themselves in addiction, nine out of 10, 90% began between the ages of seven and 17. Steered Straight founder Michael DeLeon is a former addict who spent 12 years in prison. He now shares his story to be part of the solution and collects vape products from students at the end of each assembly. The final public hearing for the proposed social studies standards is set to, for later this month in Pierre. Registration for public comment is now open if you'd like to testify in person or remotely. You may also provide written comments online. This is the last of four public meetings to discuss the proposed standards. It's scheduled for April 17th at 9 o'clock in the morning at the Ramcota in Pierre. You can find information on how to testify attached to this story right here on Kelloland.com. That's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Karstens. Brian? All right, weather today much to track. We have blizzard conditions from southwest into central South Dakota, and temperatures today obviously below freezing. Uh, Wind-driven snow is the biggest problem as we're going to be dealing with both the quantity of snow and the wind together. But we also want to mention that on the southern part of this band of heavy snow, there are some areas of mixed precipitation today. Some of that includes a glazing of ice. We're not talking huge amounts, but we do have to monitor that situation from Sioux Falls points north, especially into Brookings or Watertown. Even back into Chamberlain, there's going to be some of that to talk about today. And southwest Minnesota, likewise. Anybody that's holding a little closer to freezing longer with that stiff northeast wind, it can make a case for some freezing drizzle or freezing rain. I do also expect quite a range on temperatures late this afternoon. 50s in northwest Iowa, down towards Sioux City. And then you've got 20s in Rapid City with that gusty north northwest wind. Uh, this evening's weather map even uh, might throw in a little thunder and lightning in the southeast. And beyond that, looks like wind tomorrow. Tomorrow, the big story and any snow that's left over in the morning is just going to be blowing around and creating some drifting issues. We all know that comes with these April storms uh, where the heaviest snow falls. And it looks like today that line from Hot Springs to Pier is kind of the big line on snow. Let's look at those snow numbers and they are going to go over a foot where that heaviest lineup is. Aberdeen may not be quite at that level, but you'll be close. And uh, here on maybe at least six, seven, eight inches of snow in that range. You get to Sioux Falls, it tapers off a lot. We could get a little, you know, quick inch of snow out of this yet, but Sioux Falls has really not been in the thick of it. And I still believe the worst will be north and west. So if you get to Mitchell, even a couple of inches of snow with this wind, it's still going to be tough conditions tomorrow. Wind-wise, we're talking today, widespread 20 to 35, even gusts higher than that. But see how the map paints more orange and red tomorrow? That's an expansive area of wind, and it's probably the worst in the northeast. So, yeah, we're not done. We're just getting started today, and we get a lot of that wind all day tomorrow. Then by Thursday, we cycle the wind down, and then everything after that is looking better for a while. Certainly, we don't need more severe weather in Iowa and Illinois, but they're going to get that too, and that's a rough weather day. Let's get to some good news, shall we? How about the weekend? Easter weekend, 60-degree weather likely in Sioux Falls. I think Easter Sunday really looking good too. We might even have a spring-like shower in parts of the upper Midwest early next week. Yes, it's going to really start to change. And uh, I think most of us are really ready for that. I don't find too many arguments on that subject. Look at that. 65 Saturday, 63 Sunday. Oh, and by the way, beyond the seven-day, it's even warmer than that. Probably in the 70s before too long. Aberdeen. Now here, we have a lot of snow. Obviously, that's a big issue to start the forecast. How fast that starts melting is one concern I have for the Northeast. Any of you that have this heavy snow, we're probably going to have runoff issues eventually. I think some of these numbers are too low. They could end up going higher uh, by the weekend. It just depends on how fast we start breaking that snow up. And, of course, we'll just be here to monitor that. Pier, I would say, too, a 
pretty fast uh, dissipation of the snow by the weekend. And once that happens, there's going to be a point where this thing switches even for pier and it's going to get a lot warmer. So keep watching the extended forecast rapid too. You'll join that uh, trend, but it'll be a little slower pacing due to the initial snow cover. Check out more details on the current weather today online at kettleland.com.